Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security news each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security aficionado, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting December 9th, 2013. It's the second week of the month, so I have to start with software updates. First of all, on Tuesday it was Microsoft Patch Day, and they released 11 security bulletins fixing over 24 vulnerabilities in products like Internet Explorer, Exchange, Windows, some of their developer products, and some Office products. If you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to go get those patches. Uh, some of the Windows updates fix a zero-day vulnerability I talked about a few months ago. Although there's still one outstanding zero-day vulnerability that still affects Windows today. On top of Microsoft Patch Day, there is also Adobe Patch Day, and Adobe released a Flash and Shockwave Player uh, update. And by the way, the Flash update also fixes a vulnerability that attackers are exploiting in the wild, so a zero-day flaw. And also, if you're a Firefox user, Mozilla released version 26, which fixes a dozen security vulnerabilities, including five critical ones. They also added a, a cool new security feature called Click to Play, which will require you to click before Java content plays on websites, and that might be enough to protect you from drive-by downloads. In any case, if you use Firefox, Flash or Shockwave, or any of the Microsoft products, be sure to check out the WatchGuard Security Center for more details on all these updates, and go get them. So another week, another NSA and Snowden leak. This week, the biggest leak comes from the Washington Post, and it's a document that talks about how the NSA is using Google's cookies to actually track uh, uh, targets or track people online. Without going into a ton of detail, you probably know that Google has some cookies, including some ad tracking cookies. One of the cookies they have is something called the Prefs cookie. And as you, you search online and as you go and, and, and view various advertisements, they keep track of, of what types of ads you view to kind of cater to uh, the kinds of stuff you like. In any case, one of the things this cookie can also do is uniquely identify your browser. So while they may not know who owns the cookie, once they've identified a suspect cookie, they can actually use it to uniquely identify a browser. So one way they might use this is if they do uh, kind of track you doing something bad online, they can later verify it was you and prove it was you based on this one Google cookie. So that's the latest NSA leak. If you'd like more details, be sure to check out the link to the article. I'll put on the blog. Another big story from the week and a warning to Facebook users out there is be on the lookout for the latest Facebook phishing scam. This particular scam will arrive uh, somewhere on your Facebook wall and will look like it's a message coming from one of your friends claiming they've been uh, the, the victim of some sort of theft. They might say, hey, my car's been stolen uh, and here's a, a, a link to a picture of the criminals that stole it. Can you help me identify these criminals? Now the link will appear to be a Tumblr image link. But in reality, if you click on the link, it's going to redirect you to a phishing site that asks for your Facebook credentials. And of course, if you enter them, the attacker has your Facebook login. So be on the lookout for this Facebook link and warn your friends about it and be sure not to click on these fake Tumblr links. One pro tip is as you're hovering over any link you encounter, pay attention that the link really goes to the place it says it goes to. Next, let's move on to a story about a very interesting targeted attack called sharking. During the week, we learned that attackers were targeting professional poker players. What happened was a particular poker player went up to his hotel room and realized his laptop was gone. He then came back later and his laptop had mysteriously returned. And when he logged onto his laptop, he also noticed that it was slow and acting kind of weird. What had happened was attackers, cyber criminals, had installed a Trojan on his laptop designed to kind of spy on his online poker playing. 
The whole idea was the attackers could kind of take advantage of knowing what his hand was to cheat him at online poker and gambling. So this was a very, very targeted attack, and this probably won't happen to you unless you're a poker player, but I find it quite interesting. And it goes to show you the length that cyber criminals will go to to do very specific targeted attacks against anybody that makes any sort of money online. So the last story of the week actually combines two of my biggest interests, network and computer security and video games. What if I told you you can actually make programs more secure by playing video games? Well, actually, a program from the Pentagon and DARPA aims to do just that. According to a Wired article, DARPA has put up a site called Vera Games, and they use this site to have users play challenging computational mathematical games where the users, the gamers, solve some challenging puzzles. But behind the scenes, they actually have algorithms that are using these people's solutions to actually find flaws or security problems in software. So this is an awesome idea if you ask me. I really like the idea of gamification. Gamification, if you haven't heard about it, is taking some sort of challenging task or some sort of work task and making it a fun game to encourage users to do it. So this kind of DARPA concept takes the concept of gamification and also takes the concept of crowdsourcing, get, getting lots of people to for free play online games to make programs more secure. So this is an awesome, interesting concept. I think I'll probably on my free time maybe play some of Vera Games' is games. And if you'd like to know more about it, be sure to check the links in our blog post associated with this video where I put both links to the Wired article and the Vera Games site. So that's it for this week's quick video. I hope you learned something and had a little fun along the way. A quick show note, the holidays are coming, and over the next few weeks I'm going to be taking some time off, so I probably won't release a video next Friday or the Friday after, though I may release a small video in the middle of next week. In any case, we'll return and see you next year. Have a happy new year if I don't talk to you till then. And as usual, if you'd like more regular security advice, be sure to follow the WatchGuard Security Center. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.